Welcome everybody to AuburnVersus.com, OANow.com. This is Mike Savetis. I'm the sports editor of the Opal Lake Auburn News. Andy Gribble, he's our beat writer for the Auburn Tigers. Here at Auburn's annual A-Day game presented by Navy and Space Camp. And Space Camp. We're here at Jordan-Hare Stadium in Pat Dye Field. As you can see, all the fans are getting autographs signed. Big festivities today. The game was played, but really, you know, running clock, a lot of things were going on. But Auburn did get a chance to, to, to test out his quarterbacks, test out some players in a game day atmosphere. What were your thoughts, Andy, on, on just the overall day? Uh, you, you saw a lot of offense right away. I mean, you have big plays from the start with Ben Tate breaking off a huge run. Then you had Terrell Zachary taking a reverse for 70 yards. Uh, but, again, you have to take it with a grain of salt because the first-team defense didn't see much of the field at all. Antonio Coleman may have played two plays. Uh, Michael Goggins, when he was in against the second-team offense, he got back-to-back sacks. So, I mean, it's tough to, to gauge what we ju- judge from today, but uh, the offense looked good against the second team defense for sure. Yeah, a lot of ones versus two, which, like you said, is hard to tell. But we did see big plays, and like Gus Malzahn said in the post game interview, kids were making plays regardless of who was against. There's a lot of big runs. Ben Tate had two touchdowns, like you said, Terrell Zachary. Even Ontario McCaleb had a pretty big run. Uh, k- kids were making catches. So. Not a bad day to judge as far as what they what they wanted to see. Out there. This offense definitely has guts. I mean, they they were airing it out the entire second half. Uh, Quindarius Carr came out with a nice play, and then Neil Caldwell followed it up with a nice uh, run uh, wheel route to Mario Fannin in, in the end zone. So I mean, the offense definitely showed a little bit today. But like Gus said after the game, uh, he didn't break out much of the crazy stuff today. Right. Yeah, and a lot a lot more. I guess they just wanted to run their base stuff today. Talk about the quarterbacks, Cody Burns and and Neil Caldwell. The bulk of the snaps, obviously, with Barrett trying to turn his ACL on Thursday. He's out for the rest of the spring, probably all next year as well. So you got those two. It's a two-man race now with Chris Todd's arm hurt. Maybe can make a run in the fall, but between Cottle and Burns, did anybody separate themselves today? I really don't think there's any separation because you have both quarterbacks looked very good with the first team. Uh, Neil looked like he struggled a lot in the first half with the second team. He was getting no protection in the offensive line. But when he did uh, get some protection, he made some great throws. Like they said, the one to Kundarius Carr. And he executed the offense really well. Cody Burns may have had the only mistake of the day, and that turned into a 46-yard pass to Mario Fannin uh, when Brandon Evans dropped a sure interception. So uh, it's tough to gauge. Neil Cottle's stats sure look better, but that's because uh, Cody had two 70-yard runs happen under his watch in the first half. So. Right, and, the blue, and the blue stats look better than the whites because obviously the, and the scoring was a little different here in this A-Day where the defense could score points as well for, for production and things like that, which – you know, made the score, what was it, 57-31, to 31, the offense one, which, you know, isn't indicative, obviously, of the score. There's, what, four or five touchdowns. But as far as the defense played, you know, the defense lost the game on the scoreboard. But from talking to, to Gene Chizik and Ted Roof after the game, they said, you know, the defense has made a lot of strides, especially in this past week. They were they were injured a lot today, played a lot of second teamers. Yeah, I mean, you can't really judge this defense at all for what they did today. I mean, like, we, we there's a lot of names on the field I've never seen at all. I mean, you have a leading tackle, tackler was a walk-on, Matthew Sample. So so, I mean, it's really tough to judge the defense on this, but I think going into next season, the focus is definitely going to be on the offense, not the defense. I think the defense is going to be just fine. The offense is what is going to be a big question mark going into the season. And now, now that's where Auburn starts looking forward to next season. they got summer drills. they got one more practice on Sunday, kind of what Gene Chizik called a teaching day, and then they go in to uh, summer drills and, and where they can't really have his hands on with the coaches that they can talk and meet, but it's pretty much the, the players are on their own until the camp starts in August. So now what do the players do in these next couple months? Uh, they, they're just going to continue to learn Malzahn's offense. I mean, they've only cracked the surface with the, the plays he has to offer. So it's going to be a lot of learning this summer. Uh, I'm sure the team will do a lot get around any all the NCAA rules to get as much time with them as possible. Uh, so they're just going to be learning again, and then we're going to go into August basically with a repeat of spring practice, not knowing who the quarterback is. Yeah, not knowing who the quarterback and, and really who the playmakers are. Ben Tate played well, was number number one running back, but there's still competition there, especially when you get some more running backs, and all the freshman class hasn't even gotten to school yet, so you're going to have some more position battles there. Well, from Jordan Air Stadium at Pat Dye Field, Andy Gribble, Mike Savetis, Coming to you from Auburn's A-Day, brought to you by the Navy and Space Camp. Camp. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.